Welcome back everybody to the Houston Texans Madden 21 Franchise Rebuild Episode 55 is here We're getting to and past the trade deadline today And we're taking on the Indianapolis Colts We are battling right now for the top of the AFC South It's looking like a two-team battle Right around mid-season We've done really well this year It's our best start ever in the series we're 5-1 behind rookie quarterback Shay Don Rosemond. And now I'm always really good about this in my series, forgetting the check development at the end of an episode. So let's do it now. I have a feeling it's going to be something with the color red. Let's check this out. Shay Don Rosemond will take it. Superstar development. He's played like a superstar to begin this season. And I think he has the chance to earn X-Factor. Now, he's not putting up the numbers that are going to get him there this year. When the game tallies up the stats at the end of the year, you'll see top performers become X-Factors. You need touchdowns here at quarterback to pull that off. And he's not getting a ton of those. But he is still playing like a great quarterback. And I think he's going to definitely have the best chance out of anybody to win rookie of the year i think it's pretty much already a wrap as long as he stays healthy for most of the rest of the year there aren't that many quarterbacks playing and i think he's going to be putting up uh, better production than any receiver or running back thankfully we're not in the nfc because that's where the vikings rookie receiver dj morris is probably on track to win that rookie of the year so i guess it's a good thing here in this game that uh it splits it between conference otherwise it'd be more of a conversation morris at 578 and six already a fast start to his nfl career much like teammate justin jefferson had and we get to upgrade the superstar quarterback as well and we're still trying to get that deep accuracy up. Do I go strong arm again? I suppose. Eventually, those ratings have to go up, right? We get accuracy, medium, and throw power. I'll take the throw power. That's always nice to get. But that medium accuracy is just becoming more and more of his best strength as a passer. We also have an upgrade available for Jaden O'Neal. Let's go Field General. I know it might have some run stopping in there, but it's always a good balanced upgrade. We get zone, tackling, play rec. We'll probably find out his development close to the end of the season. This year at running back, we've seen it kind of solidified by Robert Penn. He's played really well. Marcus Gillisley hasn't seen the field a ton. I'd like to see him a little bit more, but Robert Penn is getting the job done. Oh, I never even checked out the abilities for Rosemond. Now, when we're in game, the Super Sim isn't showing our players like X factors and abilities, but they should still be active. I think it's just a visual bug. But his ability, quick draw. Passers with this ability have faster passing animations when they are throwing under pressure. I don't know if we've already seen him like use that, but he has like that jump throw he does under pressure and that comes out pretty quick. And then anchored extender. While in the pocket, passers with this ability are almost guaranteed to break the first sack attempt by a blitzing defensive back. And that can lead to some really big plays. If there's a defensive back blitzing, there's less downfield and coverage, and there can be some big plays with this receiving core. Doing some more scouting, and the top two field general linebackers are actually fourth round talents. Looking to see if there are any other coverage linebackers that could be intriguing in this class, even while we're developing Jaden O'Neal. And off ball linebacker is just really weak in these Madden generated classes. This is one of those positions you rarely find major difference makers. Today I wanted to add a backup quarterback for Shadon Roseman, and I'm going to go with a veteran because I don't want to give up picks for a quarterback right now, especially for just a backup. So we have Teddy Bridgewater and Nick Mullins, who I think are the most interesting veterans here. Teddy has better throw under pressure and throw on the run. Mullins has higher awareness, a little bit better throw power, a little bit better short accuracy. And as far as the traits go, Teddy does have the throwaway trait, which the throwaways 
in this game aren't my favorite part of quarterback play. Mullins doesn't have that. He's aggressive forcing passes, average sense of pressure. I think you could go with either quarterback here, but considering our offensive line, there are some concerns with it. I think I'd like to go with Teddy. He has a little bit better speed. He's better under pressure, better on the run. I don't think he'd be scrambling much. And he is higher overall. I don't know if that would help with like the mentorship potential. I don't even know if mentorship will happen if a player isn't starting. I don't recall of any mentorship opportunities where I had a backup mentoring a starter. But we bring in Teddy Bridgewater to back up Shadon Rosemond. And now I think we're ready for some games. The winning continues for the Houston Texans. We take care of the New York Jets. 29 to 19, we put up 15 in the fourth quarter. So this was actually a fourth quarter comeback for Houston. Almost 500 yards of offense. A lot of interceptions in this game. Roseman picked off twice, Mayfield three times. 386 for Shadon Roseman in the air. On the ground, Penn, 3.1 a carry, two scores. Grubbs, 26 yards, 3.7 a carry. And in the air, the big season continues for George Ingram, the team's leading receiver. 10 catches for him, 10 for Amari Jones, plus a touchdown. Love all the yards after catch here going to Ingram as well. So a big day for the offense, a little comeback at the end. And a 6-1 record. How about that? We had a sack for Jabari Carr. Two picks for Isaiah Fletcher. Haven't seen that in a while. And then one for Tevin Tyson. Now, the winning is awesome. We've been winning a lot of games this season. There is an injury. Let's see what we have here going into Week 9. Oh, Stephon Ferris. Dislocated ankle. Two starters now are going to be missing time. Ferris, seven games. So that Justin Johnson signing, it's becoming a really big move for us with the injuries that we've seen to Jabari Carr. And now it looks like we're going to see him play and start at defensive end. I think he can play literally any defensive line position that exists in the game of football. So this is going to be easy for him to step in. We've seen him dominate guards, and now it looks like he'll just be dominating tackles instead. Now, normally, I do have him start at defensive tackle because he's just an elite run defender. We're going to try playing Hillhouse there instead. That way, we're not losing any snaps for him. And Johnson's going to play only on the edge. If that causes us to lose something in terms of our run defense, I might make a move. But I want to try this first. But otherwise, things are going so well for us this season. 6-1, and one, and the Colts are 4-3. and three. Imagine we keep this up for the next three weeks. The division race could already be done by week 12 or 13. Now, we do have a couple breakout chances today. This should be fun. And a frustrated receiver scenario. Jermaine Candidate. It's been a couple years now where we haven't seen him get the football a whole lot, and I can't really understand why. So we have some breakout opportunities for this episode, a couple dev trait chances, and the first one is going to be for George Ingram. Three touchdowns are a buck fifty. He can do it. Although in the slot, it's going to take a lot of volume most likely. But he could do it. But who is this other one going to be for? Tevin Tyson. All right, at safety we have a chance. Hold them under 150 passing or two interceptions, forced fumbles, tackles for losses, or sacks. That can be tough at safety. I think both these opportunities today are going to be pretty difficult to pull off. But it'll be fun to watch regardless. It's always good to get an upgrade before a breakout development opportunity. Tevin Tyson, what to do here? Let's go with zone. I feel like he's going to have to get probably one interception and one tackle for loss today. I don't see him getting two of either one. 
And here is the matchup we have in store today with Quentin Nelson, the top player still on the Colts. DeForest Buckner, Braden Smith, Bobby Okariki, Darius Leonard. Their quarterback by Jameis Winston still. How long has he played here? Thankfully in this game I can actually answer that. It's been for a long time. The entire series. Putting up some pretty good production. Now with his overall dropping and him getting older, it might be his last year starting for the Colts. At running back, it's Marlon Mack, Glenn Barkley. I forget where Jonathan Taylor went, but he is somewhere else now. At receiver, they don't have the breakout high overall receivers that many other teams have. So that will be a good matchup then for our secondary. They're missing Josh Jones at left tackle. So they have Braden Smith and Quentin Nelson. Otherwise, the offensive line isn't as strong as it once was in the series. And I gotta say, for Indy, this is really a must-win game. They really need to close the gap here. And if they lose this one, and we go to 7-1, it could be over soon. Although, it's the Texans franchise, that's no guarantee. It's a matchup today of quarterbacks who went number one overall in the draft, like 15 years apart or something. But it's Roseman and the Texans looking for win number eight already. Best year of the series? We're closing in on eight victories. The odds of us going eight and eight are dropping finally. And now George Ingram, if he repeats that stat line, he becomes a superstar receiver. I think he could do it. This is going to be tough though. I just, we don't see those big games all that often. Well, let's get into it. We have a breakout chance on offense, a breakout chance on defense, and the day will start Indianapolis with the football and Justin Johnson in the backfield. He's going to make plays. It doesn't matter where he lines up. Johnson has been unbelievable this season. It's second down and 14. Johnson around the edge. Winston on target. It's caught for a first down. Nice job finding the open man on the outside. That's Hills for a gain of 16. I do expect us to dominate this matchup up front. They'll bring some motion now on first down. Run this up the middle. Nice job by Marlon Mack. Colts facing third down and some press coverage at the top. Winston feels the rush and escapes the pocket. First down for Winston in Texans territory and a loose football. We got it finally. That was loose for a long time. Texans set the takeover. Here is Shea Don Roseman. Back to the fumble one more time. Winston never saw Kurt Reiner. And he's the one who will get the forced fumble. I thought the Colts were about to get it back. And now, back to your regularly scheduled programming. The Shadon Roseman Show. Rookie of the year, perhaps. A little first down play fake. And a gain of about a foot on the throw to Robert Penn. I wish we'd only run this play when we're running it to the wide side of the field. At the 43, can't get away from the first defender, and Penn is stopped for a loss. That's a nice job by Rowland. Third down and 11. You wanna see George Ingram get the football? He slot left. Four on the rush. Roseman across the middle. It's caught shy of the first down by Gordon Norwood. Do you consider going for it here? We do not. So, three and out for the Texans. Colt set to get it back. Here's Jake Bailey. And this one's going out inside the 20 at the 18. I want to see some deep balls to the right side of the field. Test Tevin Tyson. Handoff. Running that way, it is a gain of four to Glenn Barkley. 
Going empty on second down. Here's Jameis Winston. Plenty of time. It's caught underneath, and that's enough for a first down. You got to find a way to be productive getting the ball out quick against this defense. First and 10 for Indy. Running it with Mack up the middle. He gets stuffed. First one there was Beverly, and now Mack is shaken up on the play. That means we'll see even more of Glenn Barkley. At the 31-yard line, split safety look for the Texans. They double-team Johnson, but do not double-team Jabari Carr, and there's a sack. First in the NFL in sacks. Adding on to that total here today. It's third and 17. Pressure almost got there. Car slipped, and that could be a first down. Wow, Tyson could not prevent it. Now, Jabari Carr was about to apply even more pressure here. But here's what happens. He just gets caught up in trips. One-on-one, -on -one, easy win. And then he falls down. Although I don't think he would have gotten there. Maybe enough to make like a throw under pressure happen. Good play by Donovan Young to get the first down. And back in the game already, that's Marlon Mack to the 44. Colts get to third and short at the 47 and keep it on the ground. There we go! Waiting to see some breakout play from Kurt Reiner. And that's going to set up fourth down for the Colts. Scoreless here in this AFC South clash. Taking over at the 23 and running left. Here is Robert Penn bouncing off contact and making his way across the 30. Spreading out the defense, here comes Jermaine Candidate. Sweeping to the outside, Robert Penn breaks a tackle and tries to fight for extra yardage but runs out of room. Heading to the air and setting up a screen. Threw off the timing there. Slow start for the offense today. Roseman only 3 of 4 for 11 yards. And now it's third and nine. Pressure off the edge. Roseman hit and throws on target. Shy of the first down again. Colts playing tough on defense to begin this one. Getting into some simulating now. Colts take over. Glenn Barkley getting a lot of carries. Gain of seven for Will Crowder. On third down, it's a 23-yarder to Daniel Hills. Up to the 40 of Houston. Jabari Carr gets a sack. Donovan Young gets nine, and that will lead to another punt. How long are we going to wait for these first points? A long time. Punters have been busy. A penalty on David Perkins. Third and three for Indy. They get it with Winston. They're back across midfield. Not many big plays for the offense. Trying to get consistent here. Ooh, a third and one stop again. So the Colts do get on the scoreboard with a field goal. And the Texans take over here in the second quarter. Time's starting to run down. 10 to Ingram. It's been a slow start for him in the breakout opportunity. And now a third and two loss of two. This is not going all that well for the offense. There we go, that's Josh Richards. Another sack on Winston. It's going to be third and 13, they only get 10. And now we're going to get it at our 20 and probably not try to do too much. So we're looking at a three point first half. I expected us to be a bit more dominant with how we've played to start the season and I thought this matchup set up well nicely for us, but Football will surprise you at times. So let's get into the second half. Trying to get our first points of the ball game. Two receivers and two tight ends on the field. Heading to the air. This is a screen for Robert Penn. He runs through contact to the 33.
Third and two for Houston. It's a fullback dive, and that won't get us on track. If that play can't save us, what are we going to do? Three nothing, and we're going right back to the Colts. I'm impressed by their defense. They've been able to get pressure. Roseman has not been able to get comfortable. And the running game isn't really doing anything spectacular either. Colts take over at the 14. Good tackle. That's Fry. Colts go with a bunch on first down at their own 15. And this is Glenn Barkley finding the opening and gets tripped up by Marquise Brown. Thought he might break that one. He wasn't far away from doing just that. Two deep safeties now. And again, Barkley into the secondary. He's met at the 38 and stopped after another good carry. Gotta wonder if I should be playing Johnson back at D-tackle. Might slow down this running game a bit more. Screen now for Barkley. He's got some daylight, makes his way to the 50, and is finally stopped. They'll give him forward progress to midfield and a first down. Back to pass now with time. This is complete. Over the middle again to Young. Winston 17 of 21. They're playing really well. The scoreboard doesn't really reflect it, but I think they're really outplaying us. Fake to Marlon Mack on first down. Now Winston finds him with running room. Up to the 20. Perkins misses the tackle, and we finally get him down at the 12. I don't like the plays we're giving up to this offense. Colts all the way to the 12 now. It's first and 10. Heading to the air. In trouble! And down goes Winston. It's a sack for Cordell Hillhouse. Fourth of the day for this defense. But the Colts looking like they might go up two scores. 12 yards out. Just one receiver on the field. And it's a jet sweep his way. He'll get two. It's third down for the Colts. Pressure off the edge. There goes Winston. He's going to get the first down at the least. Beverly was close. But a big scramble by Jameis Winston gets them to first and goal. Now trying to open up a two-score lead. Running inside. Nowhere to go. Hudson's there. And so is Justin Johnson. Another run. We're ready for it. Nice play by Allen Beverly. Third and goal. Massive play right here. They'll open things up. Two receivers to the right. Glenn Barkley in the game. Throw to the end zone. Touchdown. It's Roman Driver. And the Indianapolis Colts have a two-score lead late in the third quarter. We've seen Roseman put together some comebacks already. Now it's in a really big game. If the Colts can win this, they're going to have a much better chance of winning this division. And if they win, we're probably watching the rematch next episode. These games are just so important. So we're scoreless. We got to fix that. Roseman's got to get this offense on track now. Starting at the 24, pressure on the way. Roseman outside the pocket. Throws it out of bounds. Only 55 yards to this point for Shadon Roseman. Two receivers to the right, two tight ends on the left. Wanting a quick throw. It's a screen for Amari Jones. Good block from Candidate, and that's a gain of nine. I'm not sure that's going to help the frustration that we saw from Candidate earlier in the episode. Third down and one. Airing it out. Overthrown. I don't love the call there on third and one. And it looks like we're going right back to the Colts offense. We're just out of sync today. I didn't think they'd be able to do this to us. This is returnable. And a five yard return to the 31. So the defense really has to play well here down the stretch. We don't want to fall down by three scores, obviously. 
Winston starts on first down. Pressure gets picked up and he finds a man underneath. They've done a great job on these crossing patterns and Winston's had the time to let them develop. Winston to the air on second down and there's the pressure arriving again. How about a three sack day for Jabari Carr? We got to get off the field now. It's third down and six for Indy. Got to get to the 41. Winston out to his right. Come on. Yes, he slides in front of Justin Johnson. I wasn't sure what was going to happen there. But we're getting the football back with a minute to go in the third quarter. Good punt at the 15. Oh, good hit. Taking over at the 20 yard line. Is this the drive? Shadon Roseman finally gets comfortable. We haven't seen us attack downfield. We haven't seen the catch and runs to Ingram we've become so used to. Roseman out to Amari Jones. Tries to make a move and has a gain of 13. On the carry, Robert Penn gets met quickly and maybe has two or three. Been a very one-dimensional day for us, and that one dimension isn't working like it has for most of the year. Pass game really struggling today. Scoreless through three. We have to get this done all in the fourth quarter. What can Shadon Roseman do? Here on second and eight, he fires outside and is off the mark. He tried to get that to Robert Penn. And now third down. Corners give a nice seven yard cushion. Here's the pressure inside and the pass is off the mark again. Roseman, back to back misses under pressure. That's going to be something we have to work on a little bit. And the Colts are set to get the ball again. A chance to take this across the 20. And the stop made at the 25. Colts will head to the air to start this drive. There goes Winston through the line. He gets spun down. It's a gain of two. Four-man rush on second down. Pass caught. Running room again across the 40. We have had a really tough time today. The entire game covering Donovan Young. Eight for 90. We'll check at the end. Pending me remembering his yards after the catch. It's got to be close to all of them. Winston evades the pressure and gets taken down again, but it's not a sack. With every first down as well, clock is becoming more of a concern. They're going to keep throwing it. Winston on the outside has a connection. Fletcher jumped it and came up empty. Hits a Colts first down at the 37-yard line. And we're looking at really only being able to allow a field goal. That's all the room for error we have. Running this to the right side. Jackson missed the tackle. It's a gain of four for Barkley. Setting up a screen here. Barkley on the outside has some space and good pursuit play out at the 30 yard line. Can we get off the field? Colts need three on third. Down, they'll get it. First down, Glenn Barkley. He's a really good young playmaker for them. Another new set of downs. Time running down. There's Jabari Carr. We can't lose a four sack performance. The pass rush is doing great. I know it feels like we're struggling, but like they're going to make some plays. It's just we can't get anything on offense. There goes Winston. He's got room inside the 10. Caught from behind. Ball came out. We got it. Jackson the other way. Down at the 16. I can't believe that happened. Second fumble for Jameis Winston. We're staying in the game, luckily. But it means nothing if we can't go add some points. We cannot be shut out. 10 0 Colts. Six and a half to go. Here's Shadon Roseman on first down. Across the middle, there's Ingram. Big catch finally. 
29 yards. Let's keep it going. I want to see some hurry up here. Trips left. Robert Penn, the running back on first down. How does Roseman follow up that big throw? Again, downfield. It's broken up for Amari Jones. I remember, too, with this cornerback matchup, I thought it was extremely favorable for us. On second and ten, to the outside, it's a short pickup now for George Ingram. This team is 30th in points allowed, and we don't have any. What's going on? Division games are weird. This happens all the time in the real NFL. Third and eight. Roseman's got time. That's a big catch by Jermaine Candidate. And we'll take this inside five to play. Four on the rush. Roseman underneath. It's Norwood brought down immediately. We can settle for three here. I'd like us to score before the two-minute warning, so we have basically four timeouts. At the 37, trying to get this to Penn. Blockers in front. He's up to the 30. On first and 10, pressure inside. Roseman's on target. It's Jones. Down to the one. Texans, goal to go. Better late than never. We can still make this interesting. Now let's get to six. First and goal. Two receivers right. Norwood lines up left. It's going to be Roseman going down with the ball coming out. Colts have it. This is going back the other way. No. Candidate gives chase. It doesn't matter. Darius Leonard. Touchdown. Tell me he was somehow down. I don't think he was. That looks to be the ball game right there. A Shea Don Roseman fumble. And now a three score lead for the Colts. Let's see. When does the ball come out? Because the knee's down like there. Or not quite. He's got possession right there. I think that could be overturned. But they're not going to a review. Was that a fumble? Was it not a fumble? It's a 17-point lead for the Colts. And it looks like the Colts are scoring a major victory. I wasn't expecting anything like this. Not with how well we've played, not with how great Roseman has looked. But you might have a couple really bad games this season. Roseman throws the deep ball and gets intercepted. He underthrew Amari Jones. Well, at least we've had a bunch of great games. This one's just going to be a complete dud for us. It's Roseman's worst game, I think, that we've seen. That's actually the first interception of his career we've watched. The rest have all been simmed. Jameis Winston has outplayed the rookie today, significantly. That's a tough loss for Houston, but it only counts as one loss. We're seven and two now. You might have a few games like this every now and then. We've become very used to them in this series. You're not fixing that after half a season. So a bit of a wake-up call for Houston. The development opportunities obviously fail by a mile. Worst offensive game of the season. And now we see how Roseman bounces back from his worst performance so far. I think he'll be just fine. 17 of 27 in this game, and he just could not get comfortable throwing. Winston, 24 of 28. He got sacked a lot. He scrambled a lot. And the passing numbers were really solid. Glenn Barkley played really well. Outplayed Marlon Mack. Winston scrambled for 62 yards. Penn, 22. Donovan Young played really well. 49 yards after the catch for him. Daniel Hills had 24. Barkley had 27. Mack had 31. They did a really good job of making sure like our pass rush wouldn't win the game. We got a lot of sacks 
but they made all these quick throws that were really productive. Jermaine Candidate's frustration is growing. He's not getting the football. His main contribution today was on a block on a screen for Amari Jones. So, down 20 morale. Whoa, this is more than we usually see in these situations. So, is that enough to have uh, any sort of impact on ratings? Doesn't look like it. We win a lot, so our morale is pretty good this season. So, 57 is still positive for candidates. But for sure, he's not getting the football much. It's really strange. 653 a year ago. I thought this was going to be just the start of something special, not like the peak of his time with us. And it doesn't seem to be like he's going to be getting back to this kind of production anytime soon. Here's how his games have gone this season. And there was some steady production earlier in the year, getting, you know, like five plus catches a game. The last two, it's fallen off a little bit. Like, he's still getting the football, but I think we all wanted to see the big plays, and there aren't many. That win is just so huge for Indy. If they lose, I mean, we become 7-1, and one, and then they drop to 4-4. Four and four. That's a huge gap. Now it's just a one-game advantage for us with the head-to-head -head coming up. And that's going to be what we focus on next episode. Two straight episodes against the same team. How does Roseman bounce back against the Indianapolis Colts? We'll have a matchup first with Denver. And then perhaps a chance to see if we can tie the season series or if the Colts can really make this AFC South battle interesting. And maybe the Jaguars there are going to get on a roll. They're 4-4 four four now. They've won two in a row. Overall, it's still been a great start to the season for Shadon Rosemond. I'm not going to worry too much about this game unless we see more games like it. But it's easily the worst of his rookie season. The least yardage, he had no touchdowns, his worst quarterback rating. He missed a couple throws that he normally makes. His yards per attempt is the lowest of the entire year. Robert Penn, he's up to 445 yards, but down to 3.8 yards per carry. We'll see if that gets back into the fours. George Ingram, still the team's leading receiver, building up a nice lead over candidates. 615 yards and on pace for a 1,000-yard season. For the defense, four sacks today for Jabari Carr. That puts him ahead of Allen Beverly. And then two picks for Isaiah Fletcher in the game we simmed. That has him tied with Perkins, Tyson, and Marquise Brown. Oh, we can start to see the yearly award progress. So right now, Patrick Mahomes is the MVP, Matt Hedrick, Coach of the Year. And I imagine for Offensive Rookie of the Year, it's Shadon Rosemond. I think he wins it easily. But hopefully it's with a playoff berth, a division title, and maybe some playoff wins in there as well. We have some work to do next episode. Hopefully a rebound against Denver, and then a nice rematch with the Colts to help us hopefully forget about the Week 9 matchup. That's coming your way tomorrow, everybody. Thank you for supporting the Houston Texans Rebuild franchise. The series has been so much fun. We're starting to finally have some success, and hopefully it doesn't go away. Please leave a like and subscribe to the channel and let me know down below. Do you think Shade Don Roseman will bounce back next episode? Have a great day and I'll see you again soon.